My apologies, it's uh, 3.04 p.m., about four minutes late, and we'll call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, may we get a roll call, please? Shelly Dahlquist. Here. Sarah Watson Curry. Here. Shelly Carlson. Heidi Durand. Here. Joel Paulson. Deb White. Here. Steve Gertz. Here. Chuck Henriksen. Here. And Mayor Judd. Here. We all please stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we have our agenda. Are there any amendments to the agenda at this time? Seeing none, we'll move to number three, 2019 flood update and emergency declaration. I believe this is a presentation by Dr. Bob Zimmerman. Promise to be very brief. Uh, focus a little bit on uh, how we're organized for this event. Uh, we've seen these numbers before. These are the uh, uh, National Weather Service numbers issued on March 15th. Uh, the one new piece of information I added to this slide is the Weather Service has indicated that this is the last probabilistic forecast they will issue, which means the next uh, type of forecast will be the deterministic forecast when the water actually starts flowing in the system. So these are the target numbers, and these won't change for our planning purposes. And as uh, per the mayor's declaration uh, earlier today, we're planning to, for a 40 to 41 foot worst case uh, scenario event. So just a little bit of uh, post-2009 progress. Uh, so column there with 38 feet, comparing uh, conditions uh, prior to our uh, implementation of projects beginning in 2009 to current conditions uh, and then also for 41. So the reason I picked 38 and 41 is 38 is the roughly 50 percent chance number in the current forecast and the uh, 41 foot number is the 5 to 10 percent chance which is our again worst case planning scenario. And this really just shows the dramatic reduction that the, the flood mitigation work that has been completed by the city funded by the state and the city has accomplished uh, 670,000 sandbags down to uh, 12,000 sandbags roughly for 38 feet. Um, in 2009, we actually used two and a half million and if we would have known better, we probably would have used about 2.9 million uh, and if we would have had the time. Uh, currently, that number is about 143,000. Therefore, the target as established earlier today for the city is 150,000. Uh, temporary clay levees, very similar, big reductions at 38 feet, 3.6 miles down to uh, 0.14 miles, and at 41 feet, 10.5 miles down to 1.6. So if we were to, uh, to get a 38-foot flood, that would rank number five on the list of the top ten. And if we were to get something in the 40 to 41-foot range, it would be a potential flood of record or uh, a number two, very likely. Uh, this was a question uh, that's been raised uh, recently is what types of expenditures has the city seen in previous flood events? So what's shown here in the, the total length of each bar uh, is the total cost uh, for e uh, expended for each flood event and then that's broken up into three sections. The lower portion of the bar is what was ultimately reimbursed by FEMA. Uh, the next uh, section of that is what has been reimbursed by the state and then the very top portion of that is what ended up as ultimately a city cost. So 2009 uh, about a little over five million in total cities uh, cost was about 10 percent of that about 500,000. Uh, in 2010 about a million and a half and again roughly about 10 percent city cost about 4.1 in 2011, city's cost about 10%. 2013, um, 
we were preparing for a major flood event. 2013 is the spring that stayed very dry and very cool for an extended period of time. Uh, the crest uh, was in the, I believe, the 33 or 34 foot range, uh, not a temp top 10 flood. There was no disaster declaration, so no federal assistance. And at that time, there was not a standalone state program for financial assistance like there is today. So in, in 2013, in preparation for that flood event, uh, the city expended about $600,000, and that was not re none of that was reimbursed by federal or state resources. Uh, I went back to the uh, 2013 National Weather Service forecast and dug out the the last probabilistic forecast they issued in 2013, that's shown in the, the boxes above that bar. And if you go back and look, it's eerily close to the numbers that we're working from today. But again, remember, we don't know the scenario weather going forward this year. That year was probably an exceptional year in terms of thaw, the thaw, progression of the thaw. So maybe trivia sort of interesting to see where we've been. Um, and again, you know, obviously the 2000 the improvement since 2009 is not going to put us back in a $5 million uh, expenditure category. Uh, I know this is difficult to read. This is the, uh, the organizational chart. And what we're going to do in the next few slides is sort of pull this apart and look at different areas of that. Uh, what I will say, we spent, staff spent uh, quite a bit of time Chad and Christy and Steve and I working through uh, this organizational chart, and I, I would say this, this is probably an order of magnitude better than anything we've ever had before for a flood event, and I thought we did a pretty decent job in 2010-11 and leading up to what was a non-event in 13. Uh, the quality of the staff that are plugged in here and the quality of the organization is by far the best the city has ever seen at least in in my few years here so at the uh, the top of that is our command team uh, city manager assistant city manager uh, police chief and fire chief this is really our policy direction team and it's really your link to that organization these are the the liaisons to you the the elected officials so as issues arise or you have questions they're they're your resource uh, leading to the rest of that organization. Uh, the engineering side is really broken up into a couple of functions here. We, we've labeled it internal and external uh, coordination. Uh, the external coordination uh, agencies like the Corps, should there be any need for the Corps to provide assistance, historically they have. Uh, Buffalo Red River Watershed District is listed there because they still own the project that protects uh, large portions of Oakport, Moorhead Public Service, uh, MnDOT, coordination with Trunk Highway System. There is some coordination with Clay County, and then any outside uh, utility uh, companies. On the uh, internal coordination side, Mark Austin, our construction manager, is leading that up. So we, uh, for that 41-foot planning goal, we're currently uh, developing finalizing the plan sheets for those locations of temporary levies. We will issue those to contractors, receive quotes, so that if we have to deploy any of those temporary levies, Mark can pick up the phone, call the low quote contractor and say, go build levy X in location Y. So those will be all ready to execute. This group is also responsible for the inspecting levees if there are if there's water against the levy uh, for inspecting the technical integrity of the levy and then we have we have survey teams under this group as well survey teams number of functions there if there's a private property owner that's looking to build a sandbag levy and they need to know what elevation to build to our folks will go out and put a stake out there for them uh, they will uh, work with the temporary clay levy contractors to make sure we get those built to proper elevations and then we typically have these folks also uh, go out and measure water elevations at the crest so we have high water marks for a historical reference. Another group uh, consists of what we call the zone teams. 
Uh, these folks' primary function is to be in the field, on the ground, communication with property owners in each of those respective areas. So we have four zones, one through four, and there's two subzones uh, for each of those. We have uh, three staff members assigned in each of those zones. In addition, there's coordination with public safety. So there'll be a public safety representative that will be available to any of these folks should there be a need uh, to have uh, assistance from the public safety side. So their number one function is to provide direct communication with uh, property owners. And we've already, uh, we've already had a, a number of property owners contact some of our zone leaders and, and request information. So we, we use this uh, model in 10 and 11, and it really, really makes a big difference in terms of communicating information to people in the field. The other function they serve is really resource coordination. So for example, uh, in those locations where we will provide sandbags in the uh, Oakport annexation area, these folks will be the ones that will call for resources, call for sandbags to a specific location and see that they're uh, put in the proper place. Plan overview resource tracking. Uh, so this group with Christy uh, leading this up is really to track our flood plan as we implement it. We'll talk a little bit more about the flood plan in just, in just a moment. Um, track that implementation, both as we uh, activate portions of the plan as well as deactivate portions of the plan. We tend to get to, to the crest and think it's all over, but there's a lot of reverse steps that we have to do and we can't forget any of those. Uh, the other thing is they provide uh, direct communication with what we call a virtual call center which is uh, on fourth floor. We call it virtual because we keep the staff members right at their own desk. Uh, but for those, for, for our flood info uh, call number, these people have the information through Christie's group to, to respond to whatever questions they can via phone and then also refer people to the, uh, to the zone leaders. We have a very, very extensive uh, flood plan, two different formats. Uh, one is a, a map format, a GIS format. Brad Anderson is, is the, uh, the lead for this, and so typically <clears throat> as we implement the flood plan, we'll look visually at each of these elements uh, and can discuss any issues we might have with that. So it's a very good representation of all of the pieces of the flood plan, where temporary clay levees are needed, where gates need to be closed or pump stations need to be activated. And then the other version that we have is, is tabular, uh, can be sorted by various stages, by department, by type of action, whether it's closing a stormwater gate, activating a pump station, closing a road, closing a bridge. Excruciating detail, excellent detail. Tom Trowbridge is really the mastermind of this, this entire plan. Public safety team, uh, so a couple of functions here. Uh, under Jeff Wallen and, and fire, uh, levy patrol. Historically, we've, we've had uh, what we call QRF teams, quick response force teams. If there are issues, for example, with private levies that need a quick response, uh, that group has performed that function. Uh, evacuation, we're obviously not intending or expecting any sort of evacuation, but this group is charged with planning for that in the event that we have something occur that beyond the uh, expected and then water rescue under that as well. Uh, on the police side, uh, Derek Swenson for security purposes and then our traffic engineer also works along with that group. Utility operations and public works. Uh, so utility operations, this is really the wastewater and stormwater staff in the engineering department. Tom Sop is leading this up. And primarily the focus here is sanitary uh, sewer and storm sewer. So this group is responsible for closing, doing a lot of things nobody sees, closing stormwater gates, activating pump stations, and in locations where we need temporary pumps, they will uh, deploy those temporary pumps. Uh, on the public works side, Steve's staff, uh, Randy and Paul, uh, the, under the operations box there, there are four boxes that are really related to implementing various steps of the flood plan. Uh, so road closures, uh, installation of temporary flood walls. So temporary flood walls, for example, at First Avenue North, as well as uh, the underpass on River Shore Drive below I-94. 
should they need to be deployed, uh, this is the group that would do that. And then we also have one other temporary uh, measure that we use in a couple of locations called Aquafence. Uh, they would deploy those if the stages call for that. And then park maintenance, uh, Woodlawn Park, Gooseberry Park, flood at relatively low elevations. And so there's a number of steps that need to be taken at those locations and the, the park maintenance folks uh, execute that. The other huge function and I appreciate all the work that he's doing on this is uh, the sandbag uh, operations. Steve is leading, leading that up and making a lot of progress. That's always a challenging task. And uh, he's doing just a great job. Steve is also the uh, logistics chief. Uh, so outside agency coordination, county, state, equipment, material. That spelling is uh, military. I learned that this week. Uh, he tracks all of that uh, for us, so as we uh, engage and maybe rent equipment or, or acquire material, he is responsible to track that and coordinate all of that activity, as well as deployment. Public information, that's led by uh, Lisa, uh, supported by Chris Raddy, Amy Thorpe, and then our fire and police public information officers. Jeff Wallen and Derek Swenson. Primary function here, provide information to the public, provide information to the media, and then also prepare for dignitary visits. Uh, as is typical of these types of events, it's not unusual to see governors, local legislators, federal uh, representatives, or even senators, depending on the magnitude of the event, show up. And so there's always coordination involved with that. We are directing uh, all requests for information that come to staff through Lisa so that all of our responses can be coordinated properly. In terms of where information is available, uh, a number of places. We talked about the, the call center, that's 299-5300. Uh, staff during regular hours, if there's a need to expand that, we are capable of doing that. But as of now, it's just regular hours. A lot of information is going to be posted to the website. Uh, E-notifications are really, really a good way to get the most update, updated information. So highly encourage folks to sign up for E-notification. We'll be issuing those under service alerts. Uh, Facebook page, uh, news releases, uh, Code Red. Code Red is extremely important as well. If there is some unanticipated event, that would be the means that we would contact people. Uh, so it's very important that people sign up for that. And just the last bit of information, uh, this is also accessible from the city's website. This is our GIS interactive flood map. So using this tool, you can click on any property. And uh, at the very bottom, a little hard to see at the scale, but at the bottom of this, you can pick a river stage. Uh, once you pick that river stage, the, the blue shading shows approximately where the water would be for that river stage. And then if you click on the parcel again, it will show you the critical river stage for that parcel where water first touches the parcel, <coughs> which is generally along the riverfront a fairly low number. And then our approximation of the critical elevation for the structure. So anyone near the riverfront can use this tool to see uh, what river stage they would they would be at risk. And this is this is again. Uh, developed by our GIS manager, Brad Anderson. And that's all I have for you. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to, or any member of our team would be happy to field those. Thanks, Mayor. Bob, if you could just walk us through, uh, for those of us that are new and for, for folks that are watching, just walk us through the steps of what to expect next and things like at what point will it trigger when, we're going, when we would put in clay levees and things like that. So, so the, uh, the flood plan that we have is, again, very detailed. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a function of river stage, and our implementation of that is once we get a deterministic forecast, we look at the river stages, say, over the next day or two days. We'll implement all of the activities listed in that plan at those river stages. 
In terms of clay levees, I think the very first temporary clay levee we need to install is about a river stage 37 or 38. Mm -hmm. It's a very short segment of about 750 feet. And then we go to river stage 39, there's probably a few more locations we would install those as the forecast shows that will happen. So it's very programmed implementation. Mm -hmm. And one follow-up question. So the um, the two slides that you have with the um, with the plan and the table, well, mm -hmm. are we going to make those publicly available? No. Okay. <laughs> For security reasons. Ah, okay. Right. Yep, Council Member White. Um, th there, that is our flood protection plan, mm -hmm. and it has um, some significant details about um, where we are at risk as well. So sure. no, that is not public data. Okay. Understandable. Come, uh, yeah. Understandable question, though. Yeah, but at least if there's something, then if just to, again, if there, we could provide people with an overview, just to again let them know that timeline of what what to, they can expect at certain points. I think that would be I think that would be sufficient. Excellent follow-up question. So one of the things we will be doing this year is uh, as we get into the event, we'll do daily situation reports, and those situation reports will be provided to the council and a more public version of that, more understandable, not the engineering techie version, will be developed for dissemination through e-notifications and whatever else. So bridge closures, temporary clay levees, those sorts of things, we'll be able to share that information. So to the public, if you <clears throat> see a term that's called SITREP. SITREP. That is situation reports. Thank you, Mr. Moore, for that. I learned that this year. We've had military infiltration at the staff level. And experience, so that's good. Thank you. Anyone, Councilmember Gertz? I just uh, want to point out, um, again, as the mayor pointed out in his press conference today, how far we've come uh, since uh, 2009 and that uh, with the 50% chance of a 38-foot crest, all we would need would be 12,000 sandbags. And um, so I just hats off to the, uh, to the state uh, for assisting us in levy um, construction and buyouts that we've had over the years. Uh, it's been a great partnership with them. And uh, just the hard work that staff has done um, to get us to the point where we're Kind of in a sandbag business, but not really in a sandbag business. So, um, certainly uh, come a long way. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Oh, Mr. Mayor. Um, if I could just clarify, um, uh, say a couple other things. Thank you, Bob. That was very good. And the staff put this together at the last minute because we scheduled this meeting at the last minute and they've been busy with the press conferences and so forth. So thank you. We will make sure the link to this is online. Further, um, we do have a daily command meeting um, of, as Bob said, of the, the command staff that you see, plus you know some department heads. And we'll make sure we communicate after. I'm just reemphasizing that. But further, we are going to set up a agency and stakeholder meeting for situational reports, either in person or over the phone, for all our partners, the college, pre you know, the colleges, the schools, and county, etc. So we're all they get all the same information. We're working on frequent meetings like that. So there's a lot of information coming out, lots of information available for the public. If anybody wants to know anything, reiterate back to the flood website or the website, our website with that flood button, right? Correct. And, okay. and best source. If for geographic questions, zone leaders. Yes, thank and you. There, that's, on, that's on the website. And I also want to, before we forget, also add a uh, thank you to the Buffalo Red River Watershed District for their work up in Oakport as well. Um, also, I believe it was uh, Mr. Greg Anderson that gave me a tour of those, uh, of the whole dike and levee system up there too. So. Also, kudos to them for their work uh, yeah, up in Oakport as well. Yeah. Any other questions or comments for Dr. Zimmerman? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. I believe I'm going down the part here. So, is there an overview, or did you give that overview, City Manager, for? Um, 
I th if we're going to 3A, you are, one of us should probably summarize what's requested here. Okay, so, so as far as the bullet points under, for my bullet mm -hmm. points, we're, we've covered that. No, not under 3A. So we're, we're moving to the resolution at this point. Okay, so we'll make sure. Okay. Yep. And, and, and as everybody knows, state law requires a, the mayor declared an emergency, um, did a declaration of emergency this morning. Within 72 hours, the council must decide whether to continue it or not. And that allows us to get reimbursement and allows us to continue in our flood planning effort. So with that, um, you need to make that decision, and we need a more majority of the quorum here vote today. You have a draft resolution in front of you. And if you do agree, we'll get this executed immediately. And then we will be in a permanent state of dec you know, emergency until we are done. Thank you. So is there a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. <laughs> Chuck had it. Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, I, th I didn't hear Heidi. Uh, we'll say we'll make the motion <laughs> to approve the, the resolution by Councilmember Hendrickson. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> second by Councilmember Duran. All in favor of said motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Then is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll give it to Councilmember Duran. <laughs> Second by Councilmember Hendrickson. <laughs> All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. That's yours. Oh. <laughs> I just noticed your name on it. <laughs> awesome. We're Did drinking. You bring I think it? it's, no, it's just oh. been sitting here. I think.